evening online. All right, I just want to make sure I have a baseline uh, because this message coincides with that. This is kind of the answer to some of the things that we discussed on Wednesday. Um, on Wednesday nights, we, we've done two online. Uh, we are working on other things to do, so bear with us. Uh, the uh, bowling experience seems to change every time. So now there's no leagues on Tuesdays, now it's on Wednesdays. Of course, it's on Wednesdays. And so and they have two leagues now. Oh no, three leagues on Wednesdays. And so we could get in there at 8.30 on Wednesday night. How many of you would love to go bowling at 8.30 on a, on a weekday night when the kids at school and when you got work at Yeah, no thank you, you know. They close at 10, no, I'm all set. And so uh, we're just going to wait that out a little bit. Once the leads stop, then we can connect there. But there are other things we yeah. can do uh, to connect. And so you'll be hearing more about that. Just, uh, just any time we're online or whatever, just come online and we'll give you more information as that develops. I was like, are you serious? Really? Okay. Really? Okay. Lovely. And so um, we are going to be doing different things in that, uh, in that respect. Uh, but I asked the question because this message today uh, coincides with that in what we're going to do going forward here on Sunday mornings as well. Um, I talked about the Holy Ghost meetings that we went to in Murrieta uh, on Wednesday night. I talked about that. Uh, we were there last month and we talked about how everything, every question that we had, uh, Eric and I had, was answered. I feel like, hold on, just a sec. I feel like I'm going to just move. We're mobile. We're mobile. All right. I feel like I'm one sided more than the other. And I love y'all. So I love y'all to get, you know, all the same. <laughs> all uniquely. And so I don't want to do that. Um, and so um, I talked about how um, I was, I had questions concerning. Um, being a church that um, honors the Word of God, the teaching and preaching of the Word of God, and also the move of the Spirit of God. Uh, we're a church that's committed to that. I committed to that, to honor my heritage uh, when we transitioned the church. And so uh, that's not optional for us. Amen. Because there are things that people need in this church and people who are coming to this church that you cannot get without the move of God. Right. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? Say we can amen. pray. We can do all kinds of things. But there are things that you in this church need at this very moment and that people coming to the church are going to need that only a move of the Spirit of God can get us. Yes. Amen. amen. We can Amen. pray till our hair falls out, but it's the move of God that will change certain things in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so we can't, it's not optional. And so I'm always, I have that in my heart, yet at the same time, I'm reminded of what Brother Hagen taught us at Rhema. He taught us to stay in the middle of the road. Uh, especially when it comes to the move of the Spirit and preaching and teaching. Because there are times where some get on one side of the ditch where it's all teaching and all preaching and they go without and don't leave room for the move of the Holy Spirit. When that happens, um, what time and time again, uh, boredom can set in. Because as spirit beings, our spirit craves and desires the supernatural. It craves, and, and if it doesn't see it, it gets bored. Amen. And it gets discouraged. And it goes without. It goes without. And so then that's one side of the ditch. Then you have the other side of the ditch where it's always the move of the Spirit through every circle. No teaching, no foundation on which that move is built. And so when they're at home, they don't feel, it gets to be, they go past what the Spirit of God is doing. And now it's the flesh and the soul. And if they don't feel those feelings 
at home, there's no faith, and so now they go off. They get into error. And this is how we pick up familiar spirits. This is how the devil has much opportunity. This is where we get loopy and fruit loopy. Because this is where you're like, oh no. And so there's that side of the ditch, and there's that side of the ditch. And because I've seen that side of the ditch a lot, I tend to kind of move to this side of the ditch, closer to that side. Because I've, I've been around the era of this one. And so this is, has been the challenge for me as uh, 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 the senior pastor here. This has been the challenge for me. And so uh, I told, I'm committed to having the flow of the Holy Ghost in every service. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit desires to move in every yeah. single yeah. Yeah. service? Everyone. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In every single service. Yeah. Right. He desires to move supernaturally yes. in every service. And so uh, Paul said he desires that the gifts of the Spirit abound richly in every congregation. Amen. Everyone. And so, uh, so as a pastor who desires to, to honor the preaching and teaching of the word and also honor and yield to the moving of the spirit, yet stay in the middle of the road, uh, this has been a challenge. And, uh, but the Lord so beautifully demonstrated and showed me how to go ahead and facilitate this in our services uh, while we were away. Uh, we were in the room and actually saw it demonstrated. And then there was teaching for us regarding it. And I'm like, see, there's an answer. Amen. When you are sincere in your questions and God knows your heart, you're not just being, you know, critical or this. Uh, God will answer your question every time. Every, he'll make sure that you're in the right room. And I shared how we got in that room on Wednesday. Uh, that was, to me, that, that wasn't an accident that we were in that room. And so... Um, the series we did on the gifts of the Spirit, on being kingdom-minded, and on spiritual growth were not just series that we decided to teach. That was orchestrated by God, and I wasn't sure which direction to go from that, but we had to have that foundation. Amen. And so he showed me. I knew we were supposed to go somewhere with it, and I knew in time he would show me, and he has. Uh, and I'm glad we have teens and children uh, in our services, uh, and I'd like you to really pay attention to this because you're a huge part of this because in most churches, it's the kids and the teens that's facilitating this. They're leading this in churches today. And so this is not to leave the kids and teens out. This is, you're a part of it. You're just as much a part of it as we, the adults are. Amen. Amen. And so I'm glad that we're doing this. Uh, when we were at the meetings, uh, the Lord showed us how to do this. And, and yes, we have time constraints in this building. We do. And we're going to honor him. And he's, he'll, he'll work with us. He, yeah. He's told me that he will work with us. But he showed me some things to change. And we'll do that. We're going to honor him and we're going to obey him. So I'll be talking to the praise team a little bit, kind of like what we did today. Uh, the songs at the beginning will be short. We're going to do maybe one or two songs at the beginning. But then we're going to have a short teaching, and then we'll practice what we learn. And whatever we teach on, we leave room for the Spirit of God to confirm at the end. Praise the Lord. Every service. We'll leave room for him to do what he would like to do at the end of the service. Amen. That's what we're going to do. And so we're going to practice. We're going to practice. And then by the time we get to our new place, we're going to be good. Perfect. Hallelujah. We're going to be good, because then we won't have to look at a clock and that kind of thing. We'll be good. Amen. And so Amen. This, is, this is training. Amen. This is training. And so, and we're all going together. Amen? Amen. That's, that's something that the Lord has just instilled in me, that we all go together. This is everybody, from the youngest to the oldest. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, and so, uh, everyone has, and what you said, everyone comes with a supply. And everyone has a supply to get when we come. So you determine how great your supply is every time you come. And the supply that's here for us is determined with how much we need. 
and how much faith we activate towards that supply. That's how much of the supply will be released at each service. So keep that in mind and in your heart as you come to church. God wants to give us his highest flow during every service. Amen. But our faith is what takes that highest flow. And so it's all of us together. I do not carry us when it comes to getting your supply. You get your supply. Amen. I get my supply to do what I need to do. You get your supply. I don't get it for you. You get it for yourself. And so you have to come with a response. Amen? Amen. The, gone are the days of just coming and sitting in church and being a spectator. That's not how any of this works. I'm not coming to get, you know. No, we, we release a supply and we get a supply. And how much you release, the measure by which you give is the measure by which you receive. That's how the law of the spirit works. That's how the law of giving and receiving works. And it works the same in receiving and giving Amen. in your supply. Amen. It's, it, faith is predictable. The laws of God are predictable just as the laws of nature. Just as the laws of this earth. That's right. Hallelujah. Now I said on Wednesday, I love all of our services. I love every single one. I look forward to coming to church, uh, to be here with all of my brothers and sisters. I love it. I love coming to worship with everyone. I always feel full when I leave here. But I don't feel satisfied. And I hope you don't either. Amen. I hope you don't yeah. feel satisfied either. Because a healthy spirit, someone whose spirit is healthy, always wants more. Yeah. Amen. We always want more. A healthy spirit craves and desires more of God. Yeah. And so you're never satisfied. Yeah. Never satisfied. And so I hope you're not. Uh, you'll always long for God's highest flow. Amen. When you have a healthy spirit, including when you're at church. I want his highest flow in my home. Yeah. Because his highest flow is a home filled with peace and no strife. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. The highest flow for my home is, is where money flows so I can provide, you know, and, and, and make my house look pretty. And so it can be a blessing to my husband. It's Hallelujah. so I can, you know, maybe cook better. The ability to cook better. <laughs> So I could be a blessing to him and it helped me to him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's, it's the highest flow is so we have health in our bodies. And yeah. so we can, we can work and do the things. That's our highest flow at home. Amen. There's a flow at home Amen. that we yield to. Yep. And I want it. Amen. If I'm dissatisfied in my life and I feel like I have no purpose, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know, you know, I need a change, but I don't know what that is. That's because I need his highest flow in my life. And I don't have it yet. I don't have it yet. And so, but I can get it. So I'll be teaching on the subject of worship for as long as the Lord has us uh, do that. And it'll be in short, short pieces. So it might go for a while. Uh, but um, I said earlier, um, or maybe I didn't t say it today. I think I said it on Wednesday. Jesus went about teaching, preaching, and healing. Remember? Jesus went about teaching, preaching, and healing. Would you say that Jesus operated in God's highest flow? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, he did. Uh, he operated in the gifts of the Spirit, and we saw that when we talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We saw some examples of that. Acts 10.38 says, And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. You know, if we want to see a move of God, and we know that God wants to use us in this time uh, for maybe, you know, flowing in the gifts of the Spirit and, and yielding to that. You know, in our prayer time, he, he talks to us about that, and, and that's what we want. Maybe we do what Jesus did, did. It said he went around. He went around. He didn't just sit at his home. He got up and he went out. And he went out with the express purpose 
of teaching, preaching, and healing. Delivering. So if we want to be used by God in that way, maybe get up and get out of our houses with just that in our minds. Not to go shopping, not to go do anything else, but I'm leaving the house right now. I'm going around like Jesus did. Leave me somewhere to teach, preach, and heal. Start there. Start there. He said, lay hands on the sick. They'll recover. So maybe I go with the express purpose. Not during my errands, Father, just give me an opportunity. Opportunities are everywhere. Just look around. They're sick all over the place. But let them lead to it. Just leave the house and say, I'm going out. I want to be led of the Lord just as Jesus was. We're going to go out, and we're just going to lead me to the right person. And, and maybe that's a place to start. Glory to God. So Jesus did this, and he went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Jesus isn't some historical figure that did these good things back then right. and just for them. Amen. No, he is alive today through the ministry of the Holy Spirit and his gifts. He's still doing that work today. Amen. And he's Amen. using us. Yeah. Amen. He's using us. Mark 16, verse 20 says, and they, came, they went out. Here we go again. They had to do something. They went out. Jesus told them to go. They obeyed. They went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. This was after Jesus ascended to heaven and he gave them the great commission. He ascended to heaven. They went out. They went out and did exactly what Jesus did. We also see an example of this in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 4. And God confirmed the message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose. There was always a message that came first and then it was confirmed with signs and wonders. Always a message. Teach, preach, then the healing came. Amen. Why? Because faith comes by hearing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hearing what? Well, if they need healing, the message on healing. The word on healing. Amen. If they need financial provision, the message on you don't have to be poor no more. You don't have to be. Because Jesus became rich, so you don't have to be poor. Yes. Hallelujah. That's, that's the good news for them. That's the good news for someone who's poor. Glory to God. They did this in partnership with the Holy Spirit. We see the phrase... Uh, through uh, all of these things, uh, it says, uh, imparting the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the believers according to his own will. And we also see that in 1 Corinthians, and, and everyone will say, as the Spirit wills. And so people will say, well, if he wants to, he'll move. If he doesn't, he won't. But that's not what it's saying. It's saying he distributes the gifts as he wills. He gives them out as he wills. The Holy Spirit is always willing yeah. to move. Yeah. Jesus said, it was in, I think I wrote it down, in Matthew, I wrote it down somewhere. In Matthew, uh, I want to say it's towards the end there. Remember when they were in the garden and the disciples could not stay up and pray? Remember? And Jesus said, come on now. Aren't, won't you stay up for now? You came to pray, you know, with me? And uh, they said, you know, oh, we're tired, you know. <laughs> and he came out and found them sleeping again. And Jesus said, the spirit is always willing. Right. But the flesh is the one that's weak. Yeah. Amen. 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 So our spirit, that's the human spirit, is always willing. Yeah. Well, our spirit is designed and created in the image and likeness of God. It was recreated the day we became born again. So if our spirit is willing, the Holy Spirit that's in us is also willing. Yes. He's willing to move anytime. Right. Yes. As he wills, he wills to move every service. Yes. We got to know that. Yes. It, because sometimes we put it off on him. It's, all, it's a no-fault religion. He does everything, and I just show up and just do this, and he gives it to me. And if he doesn't, it's because he didn't want to give it to me. No, you didn't take it. Right. It's always out. It's always given out, but you did not receive it. Thank you. you didn't get a line for it. And so we say, but I, mm, I really want it. 
You don't get it with your natural senses. Yeah. You don't pick it up with your mind and your brain. Right. It's your spirit that receives. If you don't have a healthy and strong spirit, then you're going to have a hard time receiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 31, this is our part, to covet earnestly the best gifts. The best gifts. What's the best gifts? You know, we're talking about word of wisdom, word of knowledge, gifts of healing. What's the best? The one you need. Please. The one you need. Yeah. The one that's helpful yeah. for that moment. That's Amen. the best gift. Amen. That's the best gift. And so we're supposed to covet earnestly the best gift. Every time we come, we covet earnestly. The best gift is God's highest flow. Hallelujah. It's God's highest flow. That's the best gift. And so uh, that's our part to do. So we should actively desire and pray for all the grace-given gifts of the Spirit to be in abundant manifestation in our lives, at home, in here at church, Amen. and in the body of Christ at large. Amen. We need a manifestation of the grace-given gifts of the Spirit, an abundant manifestation. Because again, there are some things we will not walk in if we don't have a move of the Spirit. That's right. We'll go with that, and I'm not willing. That's not an option for us. Amen. And so we need these gifts to mature and empower our lives in Christ. And remember, these gifts glorify him, not us. They glorify him. Amen. The reason we're not satisfied when we don't consistently see the spirit move in our lives uh, is because of this. If there is no operation of the Holy Spirit's gifts in our lives or in the church... The demonstration of an entire supernatural dimension of Jesus Christ is missing from our life in our church. There's a whole supernatural dimension of Jesus' life and ministry that's missing if we don't have these gifts in operation. Jesus partners with any church where the gifts of the Spirit are in operation. Hallelujah. That's what we see in Mark 16, 20. When they begin to do what Jesus showed them to do and told them to do, they saw what Jesus saw. They did exactly what Jesus did. We could say they went about teaching, preaching, and healing, and doing good, and healing all that were oppressed. They did the same thing because God was with them. Amen. Same Hallelujah. as Jesus. Same as Jesus. The same. Jesus is alive today. And through the ministry of the Holy Spirit and his gifts, he brings super, his supernatural reality into the midst of the local church. That's what he does. And a healthy spirit is one that is growing and developing because it's consistently feeding on proper nutrition. The word of God. Amen. And actively participating in the right activities, yielding and responding to what the Spirit of God is saying. That's right. Hallelujah. It desires and craves for the supernatural, and it is not satisfied going without. Right. It's not satisfied. That's right. So, uh, I thought about this today. I actually, I woke up this morning. And I had that thought in my mind. You know, just because I say that I'm a Christian, I can say I'm a Christian. But there's more to it than just I'm going to heaven. Mm -hmm. And I'm saved. And Jesus loves me. And he loves you. There has to be evidence to the world of change. And yes. a transformation. Amen. Amen. There has to be evidence. There was a verse of scripture that I looked at, and it's in Acts. Uh, it's in my other book. 
an act. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not an act. It's when, yeah, it's an act. Chapter 4. It's the end of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 4. Remember when Peter and John were going into the temple and that lame man was outside the temple? Yeah. Now they go into the temple all the time and they never did anything about this. Why? Just because you see someone in need doesn't mean that you're the one that's supposed to meet the need. Do you know you can go broke trying to meet everybody's needs? You can be sick yourself because you're trying to meet everybody, help everybody. We are not called to help every single person. They will get help. Someone will help them. Yeah. But we're not called to do that. Yeah. You're called to help the person God tells you to help. That's who you're empowered to help. Otherwise, you will do it in your own strength. And right. there will be much frustration, much strife, much, oh, when God tells you to do it, it's light and easy. It's light and easy. You say that. Light, light and, easy. and easy. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you have a burden to help someone, always light and easy if you do it because he tells you to. You do it because you feel bad and you've got sympathy. Sympathy does not come from your spirit. Sympathy for someone else comes from your soul. And if your soul is undisciplined, you'll run around trying to fix every fire. Put every fire out. Every fire out. You'll have no peace in your life. You'll be undisturbed the rest of your days. Amen. Yeah. But if the Spirit of God tells you to do it, it comes from your spirit. It's compassion. Yeah. Compassion flows out of your spirit, not out of your soul. Hallelujah. Sympathy comes out of your mind, your will, and your emotions. You see someone in a wheelchair, obviously, you're going to be sympathetic toward that individual. Oh, I want God. But did God tell you to do anything? They passed by this man. He was there since almost birth. They passed by this man millions of times, probably even with Jesus. And he was still lame until this one day. The Spirit of God rose up on the inside and they, he said, it's time. And so Peter and John said, hey, look on us. And he said, they got money to give me. They said, no, no, no. We don't have any money to give you. But this is what we give you. In the name of Jesus. Right. Rise up and walk. And he got up and he walked. Amen. Now, people got mad. Imagine that. <laughs> when you start moving in the gifts of the Spirit, people will get angry at you. Who do you think? They'll get offended. Who do you think you can think about it? Who, who do you think you are? But that's okay. You're in good company. They did the same thing to Jesus. They put him on a cross because he did that. Amen. They put him on a cross. You're in good company. Now, it says here in verse 13 of Acts chapter 4, the members of the council, they brought him in and they told him, we're going to hurt you if you speak in his name again. And they said the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures and what? They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. The world, when you say, I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. that's what you're saying. I've been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And there should be evidence that you've been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You are not a Christian if you are still loving what the world does. If you're still doing what they do. You still talk like them. You still look like them. You still act like them. Sorry, you're still undisciplined in your Christian life. Just because I say a prayer doesn't mean I've been transformed. Amen. My spirit has been transformed gloriously. Amen. My spirit is completely renovated. The inside of me is brand new, but the outside of me can look like an old hoopty sitting in the driveway that can't run. <laughs> and it's only the spirit of God and, and getting proper nutrition yes. that's going to fix that. Yes. So if I'm not in the word every single day, I am not getting proper nutrition. Yep. Amen. 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 That's it. Amen. That's it. And it's not reading memes on Facebook. That is not the word of God. Right. Yep. That's not the word. Amen. The word of God is 
going to change you. Yes. Amen. The word of God is not just a pretty saying. I put on a pillow yes. and go, thank you, Lord. <laughs> not a day. He's got my back. He's got me. Does he, though? Did you put yourself in his hand? Amen. Psalm 91. But are we doing Psalm 91? Staying close to him. Right. Staying close to him. Amen. We've got to do. There's responsibility on our part. Yes. So I'm saved. I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm going to heaven. But you know what? I'll go to heaven in a size zero spiritual pampers. Even if I've been saved for 40 years. Wow. I'll be in a size zero in my spiritual pampers. Go to heaven. <laughs> Spiritually. Yeah, many, it's, a, it's, it's sad. It's the state of so many Christians in the world today. That's why the world can judge us. That's why they have a lot to say. And sometimes I'll get right beside them and say it with them. You're absolutely right. We are babies. Yeah. A lot of us. We are not growing up in him, in all things. We're in strife. And that's for each and every one of us to see if I'm in strife. I keep myself from strife. Amen. Not somebody else. Amen. I keep myself out of strife. Amen. I keep myself Amen. out of strife. I'm responsible only for Maria Murphy and my actions and my attitude and what I do. Amen. You're not responsible for me. I'm not even responsible as a pastor for you. I'm responsible to you, but not for you. You are responsible to God for yourself. And so, if you want to grow, or again, or you can, or you cannot, just plead ignorance. But you'll have a lot of learning to do when you get to heaven. But I want to grow and increase. And I've got to get proper nutrition. Not many of us, I don't know many people who have such a wonderful diet that they just eat once a day and they skip. Well, Laura, where is she? <laughs> Miss Laura, you know, she can eat one, one meal a day and just be like, fine, you know, when she does her keto. Oh, I just eat one meal a day. I'm like, yes. <laughs> one meal a day. And it consists of three croutons, and, you know. And so no sweets. But not many of us are disciplined to do that. We eat our three to six meals a day. Come on. Give them glory. We eat our meals. We eat, for some of us, just graze all day long. Yeah. And, and it's not proper nutrition. And we pay for it, don't we? But there's proper nutrition spiritually that we should be having every single day. If we want to grow up in him and all things. And that's the way to reach for his highest flow. You can reach for a higher flow if you grow up in him every day. You're never going, you're never, the spiritual things are not like uh, your car, where you could just put it in neutral and just wait. It's the hill going down. It's going, that's not how spiritual things are. You never coast spiritually. You are either going forward or backwards. Yeah. If you didn't get in the word today, guess what? Sorry, you're going backwards. Yeah. 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 You don't get in the word tomorrow, another step backwards. Yeah. You don't get in the word the next day, another step backwards. Why? Because the enemy is not stopping. Right. He's not stopping. Yeah. Fiery darts are coming every day. People go, we need to put on the full armor of God. No, how about you just keep it up? How, how about you just keep the armor of God on? You don't got to just get up every morning and go, I put on. No, the shield of faith, you know what all that is? The word of God. The belt of truth. All of that is what you do on a daily basis as a Christian. I shouldn't have to go, let me get my scripture out. I put on the whole, I don't have to. Keep it on. Never take it off. Yeah. Yeah. The breastplate of righteousness. I know who I am in Jesus Christ, and I walk in my righteousness and the one he provided for me. I walk in that, and I exercise the authority that he's given to me. And I wield the sword of the spirit, the word of God, every time I have opportunity to do it. Yeah. That's putting Amen. on the full armor of God. Right. Amen. That I don't have to pray and put it on every day. I got it. Yes. It's mine. Yep. To wear every day. Don't take it off. Amen. Don't take it off. That's right. And so, that was for free. We're going we're gonna to end here. So, 
I just wanted to answer the question of why we enjoy church. Don't feel bad if you're not completely satisfied. You're full, and you're like, woohoo, this is awesome. <laughs> There's something lacking. Amen. I'm missing something. Yeah, you should feel that way if you're at a level of, if you have a, any growth to your spiritual health. You should, if you're developing your, you shouldn't be satisfied. You should say, God, I know there's more. There's Amen. more. I know there's more. Amen. And so being a Christian isn't just about saying words and saying the prayer. There's more. That's why discipleship matters. Amen. Discipleship matters. When you get someone saved, you have a responsibility to follow up with that person and, and see, what are you doing with what, what you got? Right. What are you doing? You growing? You getting in the Word? What did you read this week? Discipleship matters because it's about growing up in him. He wants us to experience heaven on this earth. You don't have to wait for heaven to know what heaven's like. Yeah. The flows of heaven are to be experienced at your home. The flows of heaven are to be experienced here at church. The flows of heaven are to be experienced while you're driving. The flows of heaven are available to us at all times. So when I step into heaven when he comes, this is familiar. Amen. I don't have Amen. to learn this flow. Yes. Woo! This is the flow I live in. Amen. That's how it should be. Amen. We Amen. step right on over into a familiar flow. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. And so, uh, I don't want to be in a size zero campers, spiritually. No. I grew out of campers many years ago. <laughs> He's like, oh, thank God. And I'm not going back to them in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know how they say you go in the world with them? You have, uh-uh, mm-mm. -mm. No, my body functions in the perfection to which God created it to function. When I dwell into my, you know, 120, glory to God. So it's a sad state uh, from, from the world. But you know, I'll, I'll end with this. What separates us from the world as Christians? What separates us is the same thing that separated Enoch. In Genesis... We see in Genesis chapter 5, if you start at verse 1 and you go to verse 21, you will see the genealogy of all the men of God, starting from Adam. Uh, you'll see the genealogy. And for every person, it lists his birth, his children, and then his death. It says, this is this person, this is who he was with, you know, his father, this is when he was born, this is how many years he lived, and then this is when he died. And it does this over and over again from verse 1 to 21. And then in verse 22, the pattern changes. In verse 22, it says, Enoch, say, we're, we just read about the guy before him. Now we get to Enoch. It says, Enoch walked in habitual fellowship with God after the birth of Methuselah. 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Verse 23, so all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and 24 says, and Enoch walked in habitual fellowship with God, and he was not, for God took him home with him. Enoch's fellowship with God separated him from the rest of the men in those scriptures. Amen. It's our fellowship with God that shows that we're different from the world. That's good. Amen. That's what separates you as a Christian from the world. Amen. You have fellowship with God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so if I'm not doing the thing that separates me from the world, I, I, how can I say Yes, I, I love God, and I'm a Christian. The very thing that makes you a Christian is your fellowship with God. Amen. Daily, consistent fellowship with God. Amen. The term walk there, because it says he walked with God, it doesn't mean that he followed God. It means that he fellowshiped and he had spiritual progress. Amen. That's what that word means. It's translated. From the Greek, it means he walked, he progressed spiritually with God. He grew up into him. So much so that God was like, you know what, I can't take this no more. You just come with me. I just got to talk to you face to face. I'm tired of coming down here. 
Come, come on. And he was not. Enoch was there one day, and his sons and daughters turned around, and he was gone. God took him. One other person that happened to Elijah. Elijah. God took him. Why? Their fellowship was so sweet. God's like, no, you're just coming up here right now. <laughs> Come on up here. I, when you love for that to me, oh, God loves talking to me so much and fellowshiping with me so much. He's just bringing me. He's taking me. God does that. And it's funny because they're, those were the only two. So when you hear people say, God took my brother, God doesn't take anyone. God receives okay. us. Okay. Amen. He doesn't take us. He receives us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, we progress. When we have a rich fellowship with God, that's a life that God can flow through unhindered. Unhindered. That's how Jesus operated in God's highest flow. He said, I only do what I see my father do, and I only say what I hear him say. When did he see and do his father? When did he see and, and hear that? When he was in fellowship with him. Remember, he got away with himself many times. And that's when he saw and he heard. Then he came out and he did. That's how he walked in God's highest flow. And so we talked about it many times during morning prayer. We control how rich our fellowship is with the Lord. Yeah. You have control over that. How rich is your fellowship with the Lord? Yeah. We control that. He says to draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. In James chapter 4 and verse 8. I'll come even closer. And so when you hear as the spirit wills. Remember he's always willing. And But we have to initiate. Amen. And Amen. so uh, when we talk about worship. That is fellowship. So team just can. We have just a few minutes. Uh, worship is. Yeah you can turn on. 